Let's start this episode with a question. What is the one thing that you cannot fight an election without? I know you may have some answers, but the world over, there's just one answer that really stands out. It's money. It's no secret that money and politics go hand in hand. No election can be fought without money anymore. And more importantly, no election can be won without money. And that's just the truth of electoral politics. You need money for advertising, for campaigns, for grassroots mobilization. Elections are an expensive spectacle. And to win them, you need money, which is why political parties raise funds. In India, that happens through what we call electoral bonds. And now they are under the scanner. The matter is in India's top court, the Supreme Court. It is hearing petitions challenging the scheme. But what exactly are electoral bonds? Are they unique to India? Do other countries have similar schemes? And why are they being challenged in India's top court? Hello and welcome, I'm Palki Sharma. And on this show, we try to read between the lines, the stated and the unstated, the obvious and the hidden, to bring you the full story. Let's start with the first question. What exactly are electoral bonds? These are bearer bonds or money instruments. They're interest free. They can be bought by anyone, a person, a company, anyone can buy it. You can then donate it to the political party or candidate of your choice. I know it sounds complicated. So let me try and make it simpler for you. Imagine you're in a food court in a mall. You and your friend have 500 rupees. So you get a food court card for that amount, 500 rupees. Now you want some Indian food, so you go to the Indian outlet and you spend some 300 rupees there. But your friend wants ice cream, so she buys ice cream with the remaining 200 rupees. And that's exactly how electoral bonds work. All of them come from one source, which is the State Bank of India. It issues all electoral bonds. And there's different bonds for different values. Like bonds worth 1,000, 10,000, 1 lakh, 10 lakh, 1 crore rupees. Anyone can buy these bonds and you can buy bonds worth any amount. There is no cap, no limit on the number of bonds sold. So first you buy these bonds, then you donate them. You can give them to anyone, an individual or a political party of your choice. Of course, that party has to be eligible to receive it. And how do you become eligible? Well, any party that gets at least 1% votes in an election is eligible. It can receive an electoral bond. Now, 1% is a low threshold, so most parties can make the cut. So let's say you've bought the bond and you've given it to a party. Now, this party will have to encash it. And this happens through a verified account. And here's something else that you must know. Electoral bonds are valid only for 15 days, so they have to be encashed within this time frame, 15 days. Next question, when and how can you buy these bonds? Electoral bonds are available at select state bank branches. You can get them in most states. They're available for 10 days at the beginning of every quarter. So 10 days every three months. In an election year, they're available for an extra 30 days. Which brings us to the next question. When were electoral bonds introduced in India? In the year 2017. The scheme was launched in 2018. Before that, you could directly donate money to political parties and entities. But there was a catch. Any donation above 20,000 rupees had to be made public. Plus, a company could not donate more than 7.5% of its total profit, which makes electoral bonds unique. They're anonymous. You don't have to make the donation public. The name and information of the person are not entered on the bond. And this is what makes a donation anonymous. So how much money has been donated in electoral bonds? Till the year 2022, the amount was 9,188 crore rupees. Seven national parties and 24 regional parties have received this money. The biggest beneficiary was the ruling party, the Bharatiya Janata Party. It received 57% of the total donations. That's over 5,200 crore rupees. The Indian National Congress comes second. They received around 952 crores. And the rest went to the other parties. So that's how India handles its campaign finance. But what do other countries do? In the UK, any group or individual can donate to parties or candidates. There is a donation limit for candidates, but for parties, there is no limit. These contributions do not have to be disclosed. In the United States, election campaigns run up to billions of dollars. 
And there are several groups of donors. There are individuals, there are political action committees, known as PACs, and there are corporations and non-profits. Plus, there is dark money. All of it is used to bankroll presidential campaigns. In Germany, you cannot give money to an individual, but you can give it to political parties. But any donation above $12,000 must be disclosed. In Canada too, contribution is not limited, but spending is. So to sum it up, some countries have no donation limits, some have curbs on spending, and some require you to disclose the source of the funding. Now back to the case of India and electoral bonds in India. What are the pros and cons? Well, electoral bonds were introduced for one main reason, to bring transparency to ensure that donations are accounted for. This helps the government keep a tab on black money. Thus, donations now happen through a legitimate channel. So legitimacy and accountability. These were the reasons behind the introduction of electoral bonds. But there's a flip side too. Critics argue that donations are anonymous, which makes the funding scheme opaque. They say if the government wants to bring transparency, it should reveal the donor details. Plus, there are also calls for greater accountability, for people to know how a political party is funded. Which brings us to the case in the Supreme Court of India. India's top court is hearing a bunch of petitions. They're challenging the validity of electoral bonds. They say donor details should be public. And that electoral bonds violate the Constitution of India. On the other side is the government. They have fiercely defended the scheme. They say electoral bonds enhance free and fair elections. The government also says that people have no right to know about the source of money. A five-member bench of the Supreme Court of India is hearing this matter. It has heard arguments from both sides. It has reserved its verdict for now. But that does not mean the electoral bond debate is over. Next year is election year in India and questions on money and the source of this money will be raised again.